Look, I'm a huge fan of Trevor Lawrence. He's my number one prospect in this year's draft. There's a lot to like him as a player. His vision to see open windows, his anticipation to throw with timing, and his mobility for a dude that is six foot six are all huge pluses. While this may be the case, Lawrence is far from a perfect prospect. There are some risks taking him first in the NFL draft. Before we look at some of those risks though, let me show you an example of what makes Lawrence such a good prospect. For me, it all comes down to his vision to throw his receivers open. Here's a great example of that against UVA. This play came on third and 15 from the 27 yard line. Let's go over the situation so you'll understand how field position and the down and distance affected his decision. The goal on third and 15 from the 27 is first to protect the field goal at all costs, while second, Lawrence can take a low risk shot to the end zone. Remember, if you pick up five or even 10 yards on the play, then you're still kicking a field goal regardless. It really doesn't matter what you do as long as you don't get sacked or you don't throw an interception. With that in mind, Clemson ran a four for its concept on this one. This is called switch double post. The two receivers on the left will use a switch release in order to confuse any sort of exchange by the defense. Since UVA is playing cover one, which is a man coverage, the benefit of this switch release is that it slowed down number 30 in coverage. He's a bit slow getting to trail. This is very important for this play. As you can see, the receiver has the defender on his inside hip pocket, but he still signals back to his quarterback that he's open for a potential throw. This is an extremely ballsy thing to do. You have to have a high level of trust between your quarterback and your wide receiver in order to merit any type of throw on this one. Now for where they're located, there aren't many places that Lawrence can place his ball. Either throw it to the back left pylon, or you purposely throw a bullet inside to allow your receiver to win across the face of the defense. Lawrence opted to make that ladder throw. He trusted that his wide receiver would adjust, and he gave him a chance on this one. He placed the ball inside to the back of the end zone, and they scored a touchdown here. This was a fantastic throw, and it illustrates everything I need to see looking at his upside. It's honestly one of my favorite plays from Lawrence that I saw from him all season. Outside of possessing the ability to throw open receivers, the other thing that really impressed me as I went through his film was how good he was with timing. His anticipation to throw a timing-based offense all over the field was really awesome to see. It's clear he trusts his offense. Let's look at a play from his game against Wake Forest. This happened at the start of the second quarter. It was first and 10, and Clemson was lining up in a twin slot formation. Meanwhile, Wake Forest was in a split field coverage with two safeties sitting on the hashes. They ended up dropping into cover four. Instead of dropping seven to coverage, they actually rushed five and only dropped six. Based on Clemson formation and the line of the safeties, this created a three on two matchup on both sides of the field. On the left, we have the outside receiver running go up the sideline, while the slot receiver ran a bench route breaking at the 40 yard line. For Lawrence, the read on this play is to check the hips of the outside defender. If he commits to the bench route underneath, the go up the sideline could become a huge play. Meanwhile, if the outside defender protects deep while covering the go, the safety and the underneath zone linebacker will both be out of position. Both of them would have to drive hard towards the sideline, potentially giving up the middle of the field if they choose incorrectly. Seeing this, all Lawrence had to do is check the hips of the defender. The moment the cornerback turned to get in sync with the go, Lawrence knew to throw to the bench. His timing was literally perfect. The ball is placed in stride by the sideline, and it allowed his receiver to gain 19 yards on the play. Beyond these two trades, the thing that you can say about Lawrence is that he's very polished as a prospect. If there's one quarterback that is coming out of the draft over the last few years that is described as pro-ready, Lawrence instantly fits that bill. His ball placement in the quick game and off bootlegs is usually great, he can make every level throw, he has enough arm talent to fit passes in tight windows, and his decision making to throw quick and snappy passes all over the field makes me really happy to see. He's a very aggressive quarterback that will take chances if opposing defenses give them. Now from a scheme perspective, Clemson ran a ton of RPOs, zone read options, and play action that allowed Lawrence to pair his arm to his athleticism. Clemson did a great job moving the pocket to create new platforms, and Lawrence adjusted well by throwing the ball with typically good accuracy on the move. It's also clear that Lawrence has mastered the quick game, and he can execute that at a high level. He has no problem making quick reads and throws, so he'll easily fit every style of offense that could be asked from him. He can adjust his arm slot and still throw with velocity even with the defender in his face. He'll stand in the pocket taking a beating while confidently launching the ball deep down the field. And on top of all this, he has the mobility to improvise when plays break down. This means that if the scheme doesn't open up an obvious throw, then Lawrence can damage them simply by using his legs. I mentioned this at the start of the video, but for a dude that is six foot six, he really shouldn't be able to move this quickly. He's surprisingly hard to take down. I do think he needs to get better protecting himself, especially on design runs, but he seemed to get better at sliding as the season went on. This was very good to see, and I feel like he'll definitely need to do that at the next level. Now, as I said at the start of this video, Lawrence is a very good prospect. There are obvious reasons why he should be the number one overall pick. With that being said though, he isn't a perfect player. 
inconsistent accuracy, and how he deals with pressure are two things that kept jumping out at me as I went through his film. Let me show you an example of the accuracy issues that I saw. This happened at the end of the first quarter in their game against Syracuse. We have the Tigers and Shotgun, while Syracuse dropped into Tampa 2. The goal of this play design is to have the go route drag the two defenders deep on the left, while the dig route attacks the middle of the defense. This play did exactly that, and it created a one-on-one -on -one with the dropping linebacker. At the 50-yard line, Lawrence saw that number 10 is going to get open. While the defender did bump him, the receiver still had a potential window if Lawrence could correctly place his pass. However, he completely sealed the throw. This pass should have been intercepted. I want you to pay close attention to his throwing motion and why exactly this happened. Lawrence's legs are too far apart, he doesn't step up to drive the ball, and as you can see on your screen, his weight is behind the front heel of his left foot. Since this is the case, Lawrence now can't bring his hips through the throw. He has to overcompensate by trying to whip the ball quickly in order to get the pass on time. This is why it sailed. Again, the timing was fine on this play. Lawrence threw it right after his receiver crossed the defender's hip, which is exactly what we want to see, but the problem was simply execution. Too often, and just like what we saw here, Lawrence will sail passes right over his receiver's head. A lot of that came down to his feet and arm, and they weren't always in sync. This is something he'll definitely need to practice. Beyond sailing passes, the other thing I noticed was that pressure and the feeling of pressure sometimes affected his process. There was a pretty substantial drop off in terms of his quality of play. His turnover worthy plays more than tripled going from 2% to 7% and his completion percentage dropped from 75 down to 40. Now what's fascinating is that under pressure, Lawrence had exactly zero problems throwing it deep. His average depth of target almost doubled going from eight yards per attempt to over 14, which is seriously nuts. It actually led him to getting destroyed a few times right after he threw it. Now, outside of the pressure issues I just laid out, the final thing I'll say about Lawrence is that he sometimes has a hard time coming off his first read. For example, in his game against Virginia Tech, this led to an interception in the end zone. Lawrence never saw the center of the field safety. He locked into his target, waited for him to get open, and pretty much telegraphed this throw, which led to this interception. Obviously, this play was far from good, but I do have to say is that it didn't happen that frequently, or at least not as bad as it was here. Before we end this breakdown, let's talk about his team fitness pro comparison. At this point, I'd be utterly shocked if he didn't go number one overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's been projected at that spot basically the moment he stepped on the field as a freshman. Nothing has changed my mind. Yes, I do like Zach Wilson a lot, but Lawrence is the clear and obvious pick at one for me. Now for his pro comparison, which I purposely put at the end of this video because it's by far the least important thing I'm going to talk about, Lawrence reminds me a lot of a more pro ready Deshaun Watson. For Watson, he was one of those prospects where you saw the intangibles, you saw the clear playmaking ability, but spotty decision making and hit or miss accuracy is why I and many others push him down their boards. There's a reason why he wasn't the first or the second quarterback taken. Obviously, Watson has more than proven us all wrong. He's gotten significantly better at progressing through his reads and throwing with much more consistent accuracy too. I see a lot of Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence. Both had a great ability to throw with timing, both can create outside the pocket, and both dealt with that spotty ball placement issue at Clemson. Now, I know people will argue this, but the simple truth is that no pro comparison is perfect. It's just a general feeling I have when I look at him as a player. With all that being said, there's clearly a ton of upside with this pick. If you can tell me that I'd be getting a Deshaun Watson level quarterback, I'd honestly be going through the moon right now. I guarantee you that's how many Jaguar fans are currently feeling. Yes, there are concerns, and this is the case with every single quarterback out there, but with Lawrence, there's simply no need to overthink it. If I was Urban Meyer, I would just turn in the card, move on, and continue rebuilding this team. Well, that's all I have for you. Next up, we'll keep breaking down the quarterbacks on this channel. We'll look closely at Justin Fields. As I mentioned before, I don't have my quarterback rankings just yet, and that's just because I'm simply not there yet. However, here are my top three prospects and the respective grades I have on those three players. Again, make sure to subscribe to the channel below for my latest updates, and always, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.